December 17th, Daniel's life is spared. Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed, and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in God. Daniel six twenty one to 23 When you hear lion, what images come to mind? Simba and the Lion King, Aslan and the Great Lion, and the Witch in the Wardrobe. Lions are some of God's most impressive creatures. The king of the jungle. Male lions can grow up to four foot, four feet tall and six to eight feet long. They can weigh up to 350 pounds. To achieve such size and to maintain it, lions eat pounds of meat and they hunt in the night. Imagine spending an entire night sealed in a den with a pride of hungry lions. Sounds like certain death. But not for God's Old Testament prophet Daniel. Daniel's enemies in the Babylonian government convinced King Nebuchadnezzar to decree that anyone praying to any god or man except Nebuchadnezzar should be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel's enemies knew no human law could keep him from praying to a savior god. And when Daniel did pray, Nebuchadnezzar was forced to follow his own decree and throw him into the lion's den. Certain death? Hardly. Daniel spent an easier night in the lion's den than Nebuchadnezzar spent in his plush palace. Nebuchadnezzar tossed and turned. Daniel enjoyed God's powerful protection. God shut the lion's mouths and he kept his servant safe. This was not the first time, nor will it be the last time, that God shut the mouth of a lion. Yes, God can save his people from danger. Sometimes he saves us as he saved David, keeping us safe from danger and extending our time of grace on earth. Sometimes he saves us by taking us to his side in heaven. That is the ultimate rescue. While on earth we have an enemy, a lion, who is far, far more dangerous than an earthly lion. The Bible describes a roaring lion who prowls around looking to devour us. His chief weapon attack is accusation. He also hunts in the night. With cruel accusation, he attacks our rest and peace. How can, we, how can you expect God to forgive such a sinner as you? The accuser isn't wrong when he points out our sins. However, he is wrong in questioning God's forgiveness. The lion of the tribe of Judah, Revolutions 5, has shut the lion's mouth for us. He has silenced the accusations against us. You see, the baby whose birth we will soon celebrate is true God and man. He will live a holy life for us. He will die an innocent death for us. He will suffer and die for our sins. Our Savior Jesus will rise from the dead to prove the price for sin has been paid in full. When our accuser accuses us, we point to the Savior Jesus. With his forgiveness, he has shut the lion's mouth too. And we pray. Thank you, Jesus, for using your power and love to save your servant David. Continue to protect us every day. Thank you, Jesus, for silencing the accusations of the devil by forgiving my sins. In the peace of forgiveness, help me to resist sin and stand up for you like your servant Daniel did. Amen.